Hello everyone, this is Shakura the Head Girl Group, aka Trigomans, and welcome back to our let's play of the game. In the last video, we have just finished Briar's Vault, and now we move on to the last love interest in the game, which is a very hunky and muscular man. Yes, very muscular, who may have got feelings for our lovely, lovely Juniper. And I'm excited to see how it all unfolds. Anyway, let's go. So it all starts with this day where we choose the cake or the certain recipes to meet the men to increase their love interest for the uh, gentleman. Uh, in which I'm not sure which one though, which one is good. For example, this one. Um, the dreams, I think, I believe we have already done for someone. The uh, peace, creativity already. So maybe the love is the one. Let's choose the uh, never ending cake to see what will happen. So, uh, as mentioned before, uh, I am back after testing out the never ending cake. It didn't work, so I am doing it wrong somewhere. So, definitely not the creativity part. The, um, the dreams. Is it the dreams or is it the brownies? The dreams. Maybe the, the dreams, I guess. Uh, let's try that. The quitters. Oh yeah, I, I definitely haven't tried this one. So definitely the quitters. Or maybe uh, I haven't tried either of those. Let's try this out. Aha! Uh -huh. Mini quitters. Mama used to make these at least once a week for breakfast. They're made from simple ingredients, but they're Perfectly savory and filling. Paired with plain black tea, these should give anyone who has one extra clarity for making a tough decision. Now, let's get cooking. I reach in and pull out a mini quid. I split it into even smaller triangles and plop a sliver into their extended hand. Today's special is a very mini and very savory quid. It's backed with herbs, spices, and so many hearty vegetables. Eating one is sure to light a fire in your heart. Exciting, huh? <laughs> your, your expression, so, so, <laughs> so angry. <laughs> I didn't know you could make a face like that. <laughs> when he doesn't stifle his laugh, it's enchantingly deep and resonant. I think it's working. What stirs as a slight chuckle slowly rolls into a full body and hearty sound that bounced off the walls around us. That, that, that is definitely a typo, okay. Joyful, contentious, and captivating. The smile brightening his face and crinkling the corners of his eyes it's just as endearing and impossible to look away from. Alright, alright. Sorry for teasing so much. I'll stop. They're called cowboy quidges. Very savory and satiating with a flaky bite breath. Oh, and backed with protein. Heh, <laughs> cowboy, yeah. Let me guess. It makes the eater more confident and stubborn than any poor. Well, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Ideally, people will be able to harness that stubbornness to chase after the dreams, but how did you get that? First hand experience have Rango of War too. My, what a sight I bet that is to see. Oh my, my juniper. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. 
Well, what's that? Oh, naughty. Anyway. Oh, oh, oh my juniper. <laughs> okay, Harbor District it is. Because definitely not the historical and park district where we definitely will meet someone else. I nudge my way toward a booth and catch sight of a familiar, sour-looking face. However, he doesn't seem to notice me. His attention focused instead on a plum, lettuce-skinned old man holding a bag of tomatoes. I listen in with keen interest. What'd you say? Two coppers? Yes, I do not know, Mika. Grandma scratches idly at his cheek. Why don't you tell me how much I sold them to me ya yeah, for last week? Four coppers. And how much the week before that? Four coppers. And any idea how much the week before that? I think you already know, boy. Was it four coppers? Mika hops, low and irritated. Yes. So, if it was four coppers last week, four coppers the week before that, and four coppers the week before that, what do you think the price is this week? Well, that's, I'm a repeat customer, you know? I think, I think they're, they're, um, I think there's a type of one name, I'm not sure. Hmm. Shouldn't you have some sort of discount? No. As such a dead band, an enthused response, I snicker, accidentally drawing the attention of both men. What? When? Where did? How long have you, have you been standing there? I didn't want to interrupt. Not long. Long enough to learn something about you. Oh, you know. Long enough to learn a thing or two about you. Well, hopefully it was something good. What are you blushing for? There's nothing good about your boy. No, what about my tomatoes? Yeah, yeah, fine. Two coppers. Whatever you yeah, use as Taiwan. Brandon catches my eye and immediately clears his throat. Uh, I mean, two copper sounds more than fair, my highly valued customer. Okay. <laughs> uh huh. Mika drops two coppers on the counter and gathers his tomatoes. With a roll of his eyes, Rangan squats the coins and devices them into a box behind him, giving Mika the opportunity to lean toward me and whisper. Yes, you all on a date yet? Uh, no, why would... Mmm. Bah, what a waste, what a waste, and he's calling me useless. Don't be afraid to get a little meat with him to get what you want. He needs it. Hey, it'll be 10 coppers next week if you don't stop harassing her and get on out of here. Alright, alright, I'm going. Mika gives me a knowing wink before vanishing into the flowing market ground. Then, it's just Graham and I standing awkwardly. I settle up to the edge of his stall and peruse his vegetable display. Sorry about him. Just a no good, a lonely chatterbox of an old man, you know. <laughs> I thought he was quite endearing. Mega endearing. Maybe in the same way ants are. You just want to throw him a few crumbs every now and then. Every now and again, I guess. A anyway, uh, enough about him. It, uh, looks like we've got a bit of a role reversal today, huh? 
seems that way. How's it feel being on the other side of the counter? Annoying. Really? You looked like you were having fun. Pfft. <laughs> then I blamed that on those creatures you gave me. Market is my least favorite. Too much going on here. Just a giant swampy bit of sweaty people. Whiny kids and fish left too long in the sun. That's surprising. I guess I assume you feel, uh, I don't know, at home here? What? No, I hate people. Uh, uh, I, by that, I mean I hate talking to people and pretending to be happy. Not, not you. I definitely don't hate you. You're something of an exception. <laughs> Is that your way of saying you're happy to see me? Uh, maybe. What if, what if that is what I'm saying? Then I'll say good. It's good to see you too. Mmm. He offers me a small, relieved smile, and then he jumps straight into salesman mode. A anyway, I don't want to waste too much of your time. You're here searching for something, right? You need baking supplies, eggs, milk, and cheese. Oh, I'm actually looking for something fun. I know that's not very helpful, but I'm trying to make a new recipe and I'm in need of inspiration. I hope I'll find it here. Inspiration, huh? Let me see. In the back of the booth, he moves great after great, swiftly sorting through his stock. Looks like I've got a few tomatoes and cucumbers left. Some potatoes. Hmm, none of that's really fun though. They're all definitely great ideas, but yeah. I don't think they're inspiring anything within me. Oh, I've got it. Farmer Great, he took free a laden, lumpy sack. What about these? They're peaches. I brought them as a snack, but why don't you take them? Freshly picked this morning. Peaches, huh? That's... that's a great idea. It's been ages since I've bitten into a fresh peach and let the juice ripple down my gin. But better than that, there's a recipe my mother added to the cookbook, niggling at the back of my mind. I wonder if the cookbook would feel like revealing it. How much would you sell them for? Maybe 10 or so? For you? Uh... Hmm, just check them. Ew, free! <laughs> free for the pretty lady. <laughs> Mr. Reed. Ram. Ram. This... this is too generous. I can't accept them. You can't, huh? Something grumbles in his chest. That's funny. Who gave me a giant sack of food yesterday despite my brothers? Well, that... that was to repay you for your hard work in fixing my door. Yeah, well, I'm the one behind the counter today, aren't I? So, he leans across the counter, his face drawing dangerously close to my own. No questions, no complaints. At his proximity, my cheese heat, I'm pleased to see his too too. Ooh. When he wants, Mr. Reed cuts an impressive figure, tall, strong, and more stubborn than any cliff face. All in all. It makes him impossible to refuse. He retracts suddenly, pushing the sack into my hands. Uh, anyway, here's your peaches. Don't worry about paying me back or not either. Just take them and, I don't know, turn them into something delicious. V very well. G good. 
Um, will I see you tomorrow, Juniper? Hmm, maybe. After all, you know where I'll be. Gathering my pack of peaches, I melt into the ground behind me. Okay, we have a new recipe this time. Peach and cream danish served with meat. Okay. Peaches and cream danish by M Mix Mix Sage. 1818. Sweet and juicy peaches, a true essence of what summer sun is capable of. Combined with tangy cream cheese and a flaky buff pastry for the perfect bite. Magical effect. With an unexpected duality of flavors, anyone who eats this is reminded they don't just have to be the one to be the one thing or another. Flavors upon flavors, layers upon layers, ingredients, peaches, buff pastry, cream cheese. So it says that you should be yourself in a sense. Perfect pairing, need. Trouble toss? Uncertain, endless questions. As they say, a cup of meat is all you need. Okay, that rhythm's nice. Let's choose that, obviously. Let's go. Peaches and cream danishes. I definitely made them with a certain crumby someone in mind. Ooh. I know it's supposed to rain all day, but I hope he decides to drop by. Then I can thank him properly for the beaches. Oh! It's Graham who enter with an umbrella overhead. However, his shoulders are too broad to be covered by it, and rain plops gently onto his shirt. Goodness, Graham! I wasn't expecting to see you today. Uh, and why not? I said I'll come, didn't I? His brown surprise and confusion, or maybe that's annoyance. It's on him, sometimes the two look one in the same. <laughs> uh, wait, I know why. I bet you were hoping not to see me because you didn't make anything out of the peaches. No, this is a false, teasing annoyance. Good to know. As if I could let them go to waste. I hope you like danishes. This one is filled with peaches and cream cheese. His expression softens as he sets his umbrella aside. Honestly, don't know that I've ever had one. But if you made it, I'm going to go ahead and say they're my new favorite food. Good, then come and get one. I pull a danish from the case and pass it to him. His first bite is all flaky buff pastry. His second is loaded with a juicy peach. And this then his eyes glimmer with joy. Yep, delicious. Looking forward to having one every day for the next four weeks. Thank you, Juniper. Guess I should have asked before I bit into it, but... What's this one do? No, wait. I bet I can guess. He takes another bite, face brewing up in deep contemplation. Let's see. Is it something like... With an unexpected duality of flavors, anyone who eats this is reminded they don't have to be one thing or another. Ooh! He, he's nailing it! How? Wow. Uh, yes, that. That's pretty much it, actually. In fact, that might even be how it's written in the cookbook verbatim. Did you peek when I wasn't looking? <laughs> nah, guess you've just been rubbing off on me. You're pretty infectious, if you didn't know. I'm finding it harder and harder to get you out of my mind. <laughs> oh! I don't need a thermometer to know the temperature on my face just rose by 10 degrees minimum. Perhaps do, apparently. Sorry. 
saying that made things awkward. I'm sure you've got enough going on without me coming in here and blabbing about my feelings. I reach for his hand. Our fingers interlock smoothly. You didn't make things awkward. In fact, I find my thoughts steer themselves toward you more and more lately too. I made these dishes while thinking of you, actually. Ooh. You taught me when you made something this delicious? Really? Huh. Why? How? Well, since meeting you, I've been curious. About? What duality is this within you? Me? Ah, none. I'm pretty one note. Not doing like this. I guess if you compare me to food, I'll be bread. Bread? Yeah. Plain bread, more specifically. Pretty fit in a boring but dependable. That's me. I disagree. About you being boring, that is. I'm sure you're a very dependable person. Are you allowed to disagree? You don't know me that well. Well, that's true. I know there's always more to us than what we show on the surface. We're kind of like cakes. There's the outside icing, the decorations, the fancy sprinkles, but you never know what kind of cake you have until you cut into it. Hmm, I guess. Or maybe I'm a cake with no icing, and what you see really is all you get. How disappointed would that be? Relieving, actually, because in truth, I lean close to Ram, my voice lowering to a whisper. I always scrape the icing up cake anyway. I really just want a cake. He chuckles. A sound deep and rich in his chest. What a treacherous secret you settled me with. Are you sure you are a baker? Well, I mean, obviously you are. You made this pastry after all, but hmm. Say, this is sudden, but this is what you want in life, right? Is it what you've always wanted? Or just something you're doing because you've always done it. Hmm. I've wondered that before, but the answer I always come to is, yes, unquestionably. Food is the best way I know to experience and understand the world around me. Without it, I... I think I'll feel lost. What about you? He leans against the counter, eyes dropping to the half-eaten danish in his hands. You know, my little sister, she's pretty clever. Cleverer than I'll ever be, that's for sure. She just turned 15, and she's got all these dreams and ideas for the future. In a few years, I think she'll head to the main lane. There is a university she's talked about a few times, and I know without doubt she'll get in if it's what she wants. I think the best I can do is make sure she doesn't have to worry about sticking around to take care of the farm. Oh my ba. I'll take care of everything, and I always will. Because of that, I've always known what path I've taken in life. There's never been room for doubt. I see. It sounds like there's a lot you are responsible for. And I can tell you care a lot about your family. Your dedication and commitment really, truly is admirable. But is this what you want? Oh yeah, of course. I want the people around me to be happy. But are you? He shucks. I don't know. I guess. Does it really matter? Yes, of course it does. In fact, 
if this isn't too out of line, I would say if your family knew you were unhappy, that might make them sad. He takes another bite of the Danish, brows furrowing. I... I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be pushy, like you said. We don't really know each other that well, but I do know a lot to get to know you better. Heh, <laughs> same. Though, I feel like I know so much about you just through the food you've let me taste. Hmm. Alright. In that case. I guess it's only fair I show you something. You... You might think it's weird though. I have a strong feeling I will not think that at all. I'll be honored to see whatever you're willing to share. A crumble reverberates through his chest. Hesitation rises his face, and I consider telling him he can show me on a different date. Before I can, however, he says to be Stria aside and pulls out his wallet. From there, he pulls out a folded piece of parchment and passes it to me. Um, uh, like I said, you might think it's weird, but I guess this could be my duality. Maybe. Curious, I unfold the paper to review. Me. Ooh, a painter, huh? Oh, uh, an artist. Nice. Oh, pretty. The cute witch. Ooh. <laughs> oh my my. Or at least a beautiful hand drawn portrait of me. Oh, Graham. This. This is absolutely lovely. What's that it says at the bottom? The cute witch. <laughs> y yeah, sorry. Forgot I wrote that on there. Sh shite. Uh. Uh, crap, I mean, it'll be weird to show you. No, no, not at all. I wish I knew what to say out in this. I'm so thankful you decided to show me this. I don't know that anyone's ever drawn me before. Can I ask when you drew this? Heh, <laughs> um, soon as I got back to my drug that first date. Couldn't get your um, smile out of my mind. Ooh, oh my. Which, uh, which I guess is even more embarrassing to admit. Absolutely not. It's, it's amazing. Truly. I'm genuinely struggling for words right now. How long have you been drawing? Hmm. I guess since I could hold a band. If food is how you make sense of the word, drawing is maybe how I do it. Normally, I just draw strunk around the farm though. Animals, flowers, my ma when she's in her garden, silly stuff like that. I... I've never really shown anyone my work. What? How come? Maybe I'm biased because you drew me, but I feel like there's such a tough or fancy quality to it. Well, hmm, a free up judgment, maybe. Don't want anyone to feel forced to get me compliments. Even now, I'm trying to figure out if you really mean what you're saying, or if you're just blowing smoke up my ass because you feel bad. So, uh, I don't know. Guess the simple reason is I'm um, just not brave enough to take the risk, huh? <laughs> you though, you're amazing. Moving to a new town, following your dreams, having no choice but to throw yourself head first against every problem. You're risking it all. You put yourself out there wholeheartedly and I... I really admire that. All I've ever done is what I've always done. I cradle the small drawing in my hand. The band strokes capture me, sure, 
but they also reveal Bram's attention to detail. His eye for details and precision and the gentlest parts of himself he has within. You know, I think you're being too hard on yourself. You shared this with me, and you said that's something you've never done before. The changes you want to see don't have to happen overnight, Bram. So be kind to yourself, especially the parts of you that are maybe a little scared. If they're going to learn to roll bow, I think they need love and kindness more than anything else. Wow. Hmm. Don't really know what to say to that. You don't have to say anything. Oh, but actually, can I keep this? Huh? Are you sure you want to? Is is just a sketch. I I can draw you a better one. Then I that I don't doubt, but I want to keep this one. If that's okay, I'll cherish it. Promise. I I guess I can't really argue with that. Well, all right. Guess I don't mind. Thank you. Sure. Um. Anyway, I'll. I'll best get going for now. I just wanted to check in and see how things were going. What well, with the rain and all. You just came by to see if my roof was leaking, didn't you? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And what were you going to do if it was? Fix it, of course. Got the supplies in my truck and everything. C Graham! I'm teasing, I'm teasing. Sorry, of, but not really. In any case, I don't detect any leaks, so I'll get out of your hair. I'll... I'll see you tomorrow. I'll like that very much. Goodbye, Graham! Enjoy the rest of your day, Juniper. And and thanks for talking to me about this stuff. It has been on my mind more and more, so I don't know. He flashes a smile at me, opens his umbrella, and steps into the rain. And that should be a good pause in our playthrough today. So this time, we actually learn more about Raham and the duality of himself. The things he has behind that grumpy attitude, but I'm also very a sucker for a juniper smile. Nice, nice. And we found out what he's really passionate about, which is drawing. Quite an artist he is. And that, that is John Vinegar. Very good, very good. I'm excited to to see more drawings of his if that's possible or are we going to have that only demo of um, Juniper? Not sure, but um, things has been working very well. Feelings are developed. Uh, feelings are also very shared, are sharing a lot. Very openly, I like the, uh, the sharing of feelings. And I... I mean, I, I guess if it was me, I'd be a little shy, but everyone is very earnest from both sides, so that's, that's cute. <laughs> very nice. And that should be it for playthrough today. Uh, in the next playthrough, we will hearing more about Mark Graham and uh, about his passions. And thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next page of Big Low Cafe, Sweet Crumb Texas. Bye bye!